But again, today's topic is the Earthscapes software tour. And as we get started with Earthscapes, I'm going to work with the Earthscapes 1.0 and the Corel X4 platform. So Corel Photo Paint X4 as well as Corel Designer X4. And we'll really work through the steps, the functions, how to get started with these specific applications. If anyone that's joining us today is using Corel Photo Paint 12 or Designer 12, there will be some differences. You may not have all of the buttons, all of the tools, all of the features that our latest release, our latest update has to offer. But let's go ahead and get started. As a review, the Earthscape design software offers both photo imaging and site plan designer. With our latest Earthscapes 1.0 package, you have a few more features, an updated estimator as well as an updated library that have been provided to you um, with, with the purchase of your update. So when we want to begin a design, we want to create either a photo design or create a site plan design, there's one thing that we need to do first and that's to open up Earthscapes. We're going to locate the Earthscapes icon on our desktop, and you'll see that it is a tree logo, Earthscapes 1.0 is listed. If we double click on this icon, the application will open. When you are connected to the internet, you should have a panel that appears on the left-hand side of your screen. This panel provides to you hot links to some of the most frequently used pages uh, that we have available to you as our customer. Number one, we have the home page. If I click on home page, you'll see that the internet page is launched and it goes directly to the Earthscapes, the visualimpactimaging.com address. And this is where you can gather general information about visual impact as well as the Earthscape software. And we'll just close out of that window. Another hot link that's provided to provided for us is the support link. We can click on support. At this time it's going to load to the visual impact page providing just some information about support. Um, this, could, this could change and more content will be added um, in the future months, but basic information in terms of who to call. This is the contact number. This is the contact number for support. When you call in for a support question, call this number, and when you reach a representative on the other line in the Visual Impact Imaging Office, you'll be requested to provide your company name as well as your name. If a technician is not available to take your call and your question at that immediate time, they will call you back within uh, a reasonable time, uh, five to ten minutes for a call back. So we'll just close out of this window. Also available within the hot links of the Earthscapes application, we have the chat forum. This is the forum, this is the myearthscapes.com site that many of you are probably familiar with. All of these links that we're opening now, you could save them to your favorites. We could add these as a favorites within our own browser window. So if you wanted to add the myearthscapes.com as your favorites, you would just click on favorites, add to favorites and you can title the name of this page however you wish and then just click on add. But you always have easy access to this forum page directly from the Earthscapes window. Of course to enter into the forum all we have to do is click here to enter the forum. The forum will give you access to the tips of the week, any announcements, suggestions for the staff, as well as any general information with installation or activation for your Earthscapes program. It's a great place to come back to you and, and to check on um, as the weeks and as the months and as your season progresses. And then lastly available on the Earthscapes page, we have the tip of the week. So if you click on tip of the week, again it's going to launch a new browser. So it's going to directly connect you to the internet instead of taking you just to the general Earthscapes forum page, the myearthscapes.com, it's going to take you right into the tip of the week where you have view and you have access to all of the tips that have been produced. To review additional tips, we can just click on um, different pages where these tips are made available and you can scroll 
or you can perform a search if you are looking for a particular topic um, or if you're looking for any um, specific information on the forum site. You can enter in the keywords here and then click on search. Also navigating the Earthscapes page, we'll just click on to close our internet. Um, to work on the Earthscapes page, if I do go to my file menu, you can see we have open, we have new project and recent projects. The methodology of using Earthscapes is to produce a project name, uh, produce a project file. So when we go out to the Smith property, we have a new project that we'll be working on. We'll be creating a photo design as well as creating a site plan and possibly an estimate. So when we open up Earthscapes for the first time, you can select file and new project. And when you open up the new project, you'll see that the Earthscapes window does change, allowing for you to enter in the general information of that particular project. This information must be filled in prior to having access to the estimator screen. So if you wish to create an estimate, you must open or create a new project. The fields that have an asterisk, those are required fields. And once all fields are filled in, you can then advance to the next page, which is just confirming the project name and confirming if it's the same project details, same project information as the, the client information. Also available within the Earthscapes window, we do have some options. Options allow for you to customize the Earthscapes program. For example, if you wanted to enter in your company information, your company address, uh, as well as imports a company logo. All this information would appear when you create, produce, and print your estimate. You also have the option to enter in a company slogan, which would be displayed at the bottom of your printed estimates. And you have the option to tax your products, tax your labor, and what tax rate. Available within the options window, we can go into user print, preferences. User preferences, just to describe what is available, when you print your estimate, you can choose to print on blank paper. Printing on blank paper will use the logo that you've imported and will create kind of a, a template, a letterhead for you. If you already have custom letterhead with your company name, a logo, uh, maybe a slogan as well. You can select a print on custom letterhead. That means when you print your estimate, you're going to place that custom letterhead into your printer prior to uh, fully printing the estimate that's produced for you. Also available within options, we do have some, some file location of where items are situated and located within the Earthscapes program. Most often, we won't have you do anything with this particular applications tab um, unless we had to integrate the settings or the customizations with Corel. Then technical support might take you to this particular tab and have you uh, make some changes with this particular setting. Anytime that you make a change within the options window and you click on close, you will have a save change dialog message that appears. And of course, if you have made change, yes, you would want to save those changes. Available within the Earthscapes window, we have a direct button for Corel. Corel, when you click on the Corel button in the, the file menu, or within our menu bar, running across the top of the Earthscapes window, we have access to Corel Designer, as well as Corel Photo Paint, Corel Capture, and Corel Trace. The two major platforms that works with the Earthscapes program that has been customized for Earthscapes for your needs as a landscape designer, as an independent contract, as a design build firm, are both Corel Designer as well as Corel Photo Paint. When we wish to create our site plan designs, we want to work with Corel Designer. So when we want to produce those overhead bird's eye designs, all of your line designs, 
Um, you start with a survey plat. Um, maybe you just start with the measurements of the property. You want to produce a two-scale drawing, a site plan of your project. You'll click on Corel Designer. When we select Corel Designer, you'll notice that the application does open. And if you don't see it immediately, check the bottom of your status bar area. Down towards the bottom of your screen is your status bar. And we'll see that Corel Designer has open, but it just hasn't fully come up to view. With Corel Designer opened, if we want to maximize the screen, let's just navigate to the right upper right-hand corner of our Corel Designer window. We have a Minimize button. We have a Maximize button, and we also have a Close. Click on that Maximize button, and it's going to take your Corel Designer page to a full screen. To get started, we'll often direct our customers to the File menu, New from Template. When you click on New from Template, you have the option to choose what scale you wish to use. Any Corel Designer X4 users, if you click on the Browse button, in the lower left-hand corner, and you'll see that we now have a pathway that is displayed for us. If I just click on Templates, because right now we have Architectural listed. If I click on Templates, it's going to take me back to either choosing Engineering Scale or Architectural Scale. If I want to select the Engineering Scale, I double-click on Engineering, and it's going to open up specific scales for me to choose. 1 inch equals 10 feet, 1 inch equals 20, and so on. If this is not the desired scale that I'd like to use, I opened up engineering and I'm thinking, no, I'd rather use an eighth scale. It's easy enough to change. We'll go back to our pathway, which sits on top of the screen. So let's just do that once again. So we'll navigate up to the pathway that's displayed for us. Right now, we're selected on Engineering. Let's just click on Templates. And we have provided to us Architectural versus Engineering. We know we don't want the Engineering scale. We'd rather have Architectural. Double-click on Architectural, and then we can choose our 1 8 scale and click on Open. The Corel Designer template is a template. It's a piece of paper that's based on 24 by 36 inches. So it is a sheet size 24 inches by 36 inches in your width. If you don't have all of the available toolbars up on the top, you might have your visual impact toolbar that appears along the side. And this has your geometric shapes. It also has your line tools, your magnifying glass. You may have this toolbar that appears on the left-hand side versus the top. You do have the option to move these toolbars if needed. For example, if I wanted to move my standard toolbar, which has my line tools, it has my dimension tools, it has my magnifying glass, if I'd like to move this so it does sit on the left-hand vertical of my screen, all I need to do is navigate over to the far most left-hand side of that toolbar, you'll see my cursor changes, and I move over to that extreme left of the toolbar. I can then left-click and I can drag, and you'll see that I can pop the toolbar completely out of place, so it is its own independent window. And if I'd like to place our, the toolbar on the left-hand side of the screen, I'm just going to left-click, and in the blue toolbar area, around the border, the, the toolbar border, I can left click and I can drag. And as I drag over to the left-hand side of my screen, you'll see that that toolbar just morphs right into the left-hand side of the screen. And now our toolbar is displayed on the left-hand side. Again, we're going to go to the, up, the upper top of this toolbar area. You'll see the cursor changes. I left click and I drag. I can pop that toolbar out of place. And if I wanted to position the toolbar on the horizontal, I can just move my cursor to that area, and you'll see that the toolbar does change. And we can even slide it over a little bit farther. So you can change your toolbar. Another thing to be aware of when you're working with either 
Corel Designer or Corel Photopaint is which toolbars are selected. And with the designer application, most often you will have your first five toolboxes, toolbars selected. If we do take one of these away, so if you're ever missing a toolbar, the easiest way to get back to it or to see if it has been disabled is to go into the top menu bar area, so the top toolbar area, right click. This will produce for you all the toolbars that are selected. And I say, oh, my toolbox. The first five items should be checked. So let me check toolbox. And there's our standard toolbar. There's our toolbox that does offer our line tools, our geometric shape, as well as the magnifying glass. Again, if you have a toolbar that's missing, simply navigate to the top of your screen in the toolbar area. You'll right click. And it's going to bring up which toolbars are selected for you. OK, so we have our toolbar, which does allow for us to draw lines, draw shapes, zoom in and out with the magnifying glass. So this is probably your most frequently used toolbar for designer. You also have, just above this toolbar, the ability to change your units, which when you begin a design, you do want to change your units to feet. Changing your units to feet will allow for you to see how long the length of your line is. So when we left click and we drag a line, create a line on our designer page, the readout will be in feet, which makes sense. We want our lines to be read out in feet. If unit is not displayed, the reason being is something is selected on your designer page. For example, I have my page border selected. You could also have a plant symbol selected. And you want to confirm that units is your chosen, uh, feet is your chosen unit. Um, how can we confirm that? Let's just take our object pick tool or, or the cursor. We'll move outside of our page border. So we move outside and we left click. So nothing is selected. Nothing is active. When nothing is active, you'll notice that units appears for us once again on our top toolbar area. So then we can make necessary changes. One quick note, how do we get to our plant symbols? Um, what we can do is we have designer open. We're working with a design. We're creating a design. But we just want some basic plant symbols to work with and use. Let's go back to our Earthscapes application. So all of the programs that are open on your computer, they're situated in your task bar. So anything that's currently running, and that you might have minimized, or maybe it's running behind another application, it's going to be situated or placed within your, your, your status bar area. So we have Corel Designer, which is open right now. To gain access to your plant symbols, I want you to click on the Earthscape application. That's going to open up the Earthscape program. And the plant symbols are located within database. This is where you can assign properties to specific plant symbols. I'm just going to cancel out of the screen we're currently in. OK, so when we click on database, it opens up the database for us to assign properties to our plant symbols. But let's take a look on the far right-hand side. You'll see that we have architectural symbols listed. This is where your plant symbols are also situated. We can pop this library of symbols out so it doesn't become its own window. And that's by clicking on this button for your window. So we have this floating library of symbols. Let's navigate back down to our status bar area, bring up designer once again. And if we'd like to use our plant symbols, we can select plant symbols. And now we are free to drag and drop a plant symbol and create our design as needed. When we're done with designer, we can simply save our design and close using the red X. Or if we wanted to, we can minimize designer. And if we'd like to position our plant 
symbol library back to the right-hand side screen. We just click on the window once again, and it's going to pop it right back into place within the database view. So let's take a few minutes to work and look at Corel Photo Paint. Just some of the basic tools, the toolbar, navigate the system for creating your photo design. So we just talked about Corel Designer and how Designer is used to create your overhead site plants using the plant symbols. Photo Paint is when you create your photo design. We're creating visual illustrations, beginning with a digital picture of the project site. So click on Photo Paint. You'll notice that Photo Paint launches. We often have a quick start menu that does appear. I'm just going to open up an image just so we have an image opened on our screen. You can choose to close out of that quick view menu just by using the red X, or you can navigate to a, a particular file that you'd like to open and use. Um, you don't have to use that welcome window to open up your files for the first time. Most of our customers will actually open up files by going to the file menu, selecting open, and navigating to the picture of the project site. Um, that might be saved in my pictures, it might be on your digital camera that you have plugged into your a laptop, plugged into your computer, and you'll navigate to that location just by clicking on the file and open menu. Within Corel Photo Paint, we see that we have Corel Photo Paint open. That's our title bar that appears across the top of the screen. We're working with Corel Photo Paint. Again, Corel Photo Paint is to create the before and after visuals, the photo designs. When you're working with Corel Photo Paint, and let's say the toolbars aren't matching up with maybe the tutorial lesson, or perhaps you're missing a toolbar altogether. Very similar to Corel Designer, we can move up to the horizontal toolbar area and right click within the gray space. And you'll see that we have the very first four toolbars selected which is standard. So you should um, have the very first toolbar selected. As a default, you'll have toolbox selected, but that does not have the customization. Instead of just a standard toolbox, we need to have the VII toolbox, which is the Visual Impact Imaging Toolbox. This is where all your customizations are, the clone tool, the texture tool, access to your different textures, such as the mulch, the pavers, the grasses. If this is unchecked, and to uncheck this toolbox, all you have to do is left click, you'll notice that it removes that left vertical toolbar. It's gone. So to gain access, to pull it back up, all we have to do is navigate back up to the top of our screen in the toolbar area, the gray toolbar area, right click. This will bring up the toolbars that are active, that are selected, that are in view within our Corel Photo Paint application. And we navigate down to VII Toolbox. This is your custom toolbox. And we simply left click, and you'll see that your custom toolbar is displayed, where we have the clone tool, we have our clone from fill, our texture tool, our fill bucket, and of course your different fills or textures. If you wish to change the location of your toolbar, again, we can go to the upper, the top of our toolbar area where you see these, the dashed line running across. Your cursor does change when you navigate or move on top of that dashed line. We can left click and we can drag. And we can make this toolbar independent, so it's a floating toolbar. Or we can pop it up to the horizontal. Or as a standard, that VII toolbox does sit on the left hand side of your screen. To gain access to the photos, um, all of your design elements, plant material, hardscapes, architectural elements, any objects that you drag and drop to create your designs, those are all saved and you can gain access to them from the Earthscapes window. So again, we have Corel Photo Paint open at this time. We want to continue creating a design. We want to grab another object from the library to do so. Locate the Earthscapes icon in your bottom status bar area. We'll click on the Earthscapes 
icon, select photo imaging project, that's going to bring up the ES library. The ES library has a dominance in that it's going to be the the foremost window that appears. So if I do bring Corel Photo Paint back up again, the ES library will always tile so it's in the forefront. You can always see it. It's always going to be the very top window of your computer, of your applications that are running. To gain access to any object within the library, we can click on the drop down arrow. We can navigate to a catalog. We can expand this library window if we wanted to show more content. We can drag the library to the bottom of our screen to show more content, or we can drag the window to the right or to the left to show more objects at one time. You can always use the scroll bar if you'd like to scroll through these items very quickly. And available within the ES library, we do have the search function. Click on that search function, and we can do a search by common name as well as a search by scientific name. When you do, uh, when you do find a particular plant by search, all uh, we have to do from this inventory item finder, from this search window, we can left click, drag and drop that item directly from our search window onto our design. Each time that you drag and drop an item from the library, it is cached within the recently used folder. So each time you drag and drop an item, if I go to my recently used you'll see that we do have two items that now are displayed under your recently used. To minimize the library, I can use the minimize button. You'll see that you don't have an extra icon for that library. So to gain access, again, for your Earthscapes library, when we cursor over the Earthscapes application, we have the general Earthscapes program, or we have the ES library. Click on ES Library, it's going to bring your library back up for you. If you want to close completely out of the library, we can use the red X to close out of the library. So let's just return back to the Earthscape application. This is your general screen. This is where you have access to both Corel Designer to create your overhead site plan designs, as well as Corel Photo Paint. That's where you'll create your before and after visual designs. To gain access to just a standard default plant symbol library, you'll select database. On the right-hand side of this database screen, this is where your symbols are located. You have access to architectural symbols, plant elevation symbols, as well as your standard overhead plant symbols. To pop this window out of our database, Screen, we just click on the icon of the window, and it's going to make our plant symbol library an independent floating window. When we have designer open, we can click on designer and freely select our plant symbols, drag and drop those sim plant symbols from our plant symbol library. To pop that plant symbol library back into the Earthscape software. Let's just bring Earthscapes back up on our screen, and then we just click on the same button, the window button, and it's going to pop it right back into that database window. The same is true for Photo Paint. If we want to work on a photo design, we can launch Corel Photo Paint from the Earthscapes window with Photo Paint open on our screen. If we'd like to add more design objects, photos, pictures of plants, pictures of architectural elements, water features, pavers. Return to the Earthscapes window in the bottom status bar area and select the photo imaging project. This is going to open up the Earthscapes library and then click on photo paint and we can select any item, any catalog within the Earthscapes library, drag and drop and continue to create a design. 
we hope this was a good tutorial, a great refresher for you, those of you using the Earthscapes program, uh, a great reminder of where the tools are, um, where you get access to a lot of the tools, the, the buttons, the features, the functions within the Earthscapes program. And this is a great refresher um, and also uh, just a great reminder of where those tools are. And as we begin our additional training webinar series, you can always come back to this particular presentation just to get the overview, the refresher of where do you gain access to the different elements of the overall Earthscapes program. So I hope you enjoyed your time today. Um, we will have another training webinar. It's scheduled for Monday, November the 21st. And that's going to cover specifically the use of plant symbols on an overhead site plan design. So we hope that you can join us. And I uh, thank you for your time today. If there are any questions, I'm going to take a look to see if we have any questions that came in. If you have any further questions, you can always call into the office, and that's available at 330-259-7661. We had one question that came in, um, can you copy symbols in Designer? Yes, and that's going to be true for both Photo Paint as well as Corel Designer. And let's just show how we can copy a symbol in the Site Plan Designer application. So when we have a symbol, selected and we like to duplicate or copy this symbol. We have a symbol selected. All we need to do is press Control D and it makes a duplicate, makes a copy. Again, have a symbol selected. It's selected because we have nodes, resizing nodes that appear around this object or around this symbol. Again, press Control on your keyboard plus the letter D as in dog and it duplicates that symbol for you. To learn more about symbols, join us next week for our plant symbol training lecture on Monday, November 21st. Again, thank you everyone that joined us today. The video of today's session will be available for viewing later. And have a great day. Bye-bye.